we did the even snatch, you would do the odd ones for homework on this page. Okay? But you are not doing the odd ones right now. You're looking at me. So odds up here. Alright. Number two. What form is this in, guys? Factor form. Yes. So factor form. You have to count the number of X. So I have one, two, three, four. Degree four, because each of them have a multiplicity of two. One, two, three, four. Degree four. My leading coefficient is negative, so I'm thinking in my mind that the ends are going to be sticking straight downward. Set them equal to zero. X equals zero. Multiplicity of two. X equals negative one. Multiplicity of two. That means it's going to bump the graph. So that's why you see that it bumps, but does not go straight through it on number one, two. On number four, one, two, three, four, five. I counted it three times because you see that exponent. So degree five, leading coefficient. I don't see a negative over here. That's positive. So now I got x equals two, x equals one, x equals negative one with a multiplicity of three. So at, at negative one, I didn't do a very good job of breaking it there, but there's a negative one. So it's positive, means it's increasing from left to right. So it's doing this. So I'm going to go here, break it, go through it, and up like that. On number six, it is in standard. So you just look at your highest degree. Degree four, the leading coefficient is positive one. I have a plus. I got to factor it, guys. So I take an x squared out. That leaves x squared plus 8x plus 15. Now I can do easy factoring here. So it's x plus 5, x plus 3. So x equals 0 for my first one, but that has a multiplicity of 2 because it has an exponent greater than 1. x equals negative 5, x equals negative 3. It is even degree with positive. That means both my ends are sticking upward. So I'm going to go through negative 5. I'm going to go through negative 3. But at 0, multiply, I'm going to bump it. I don't go through it. I just touch it. And that is why my graph looks like that. Are there any questions on 2, 4, 6? We're going to do 8, 10, and 12 together. Number 8. What degree do I have here, Mr. Lamar? What's my degree here, buddy? Three. Very good. And he got that by going one, two, three. Colby, what's my leading coefficient, huh? Very good. So let's think in our mind. Degree three leading coefficient. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. So leading coefficient will be going ooh, like that, wouldn't it? And guys, the thing about this is when you get to calculus next year, you got to be able not to do the exact graph in your mind, but you got to know what shape it looks like, okay? That's why we spend so much time about shapes, is just knowing that it's going to be like this. Because a lot of things, domain and range, and you just got to know, okay, it's going like that, so domain's this, range is all that. So that's why you cannot just let this go, okay? I know that like we spent Friday on it, but we're going to review this every day. You cannot forget that chart. That's why Mr. Esther created that chart while watching TV in his, at his house. You know I have chart paper at my house, so when I think of stuff, I just do it while watching TV. So that was created while watching TV. All right. Now, so what's my first zero? Um, Dylan, what will be my first zero? Negative one. Does it have a multiplicity, guys? Yes. It has a multiplicity of two. Garrett, what's my next zero? Very good. All right, so I got one at negative 1 and one at negative 4. And the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, negative 4, I go straight through it. I got multiplicity of 2, that means I'm going to bump it. And that is my answer. And that's why we just sketch it, because the importance is just knowing the shape.
All right, let's look at number 10. Holly, what would be my degree on number 10, huh? Four. One, two, three, four. What's my leading coefficient, Zach? Very good. So I got degree four, leading coefficient negative. Alan, where's my ends going to be pointing? Downward. Very good. Downward. All right, so let's list my zeros. What's my first zero, Parker? Very good. What's my next zero, Nick? Very good. What's my next zero, Bailey? Very good. Kylie, what's my final zero? Very good. So let's graph that. There's no multiplicity, so I'll just go through each of my points. Remember, you can only cross the x-axis at points. I, I've noticed some students try to cross it. You can only go through those points. Okay, That's the whole point. What's another, what's another name for zeros? What's another name for roots? X-intercepts. Thank you. All right, number 12. What form is this in here, um, Abigail? What's the, what form is that in, huh? Standard. Very good. So I need to put it in what form, Harrison? What can I factor out of that, buddy? Negative 2x what? Squared. Very good. So that leaves an x squared plus 6x plus 8. Oh, I like that. That's going to factor easy. x plus 4, x plus 2. What is my degree on this one, guys? 4. My leading coefficient is? Negative. Very good. What's my first zero? If I set this equal to zero, what would that be? Zero. Does it have a multiplicity with it? Yes. Multiplicity of two. What's my next zero? Negative four. What's my final zero? Very good. So now I'm going to graph that. Degree four. Both my ends will be pointing where? Downward. Very good. Let's watch this. Okay. Multiplicity zero. That's the only one i got to worry about. And that is my graph. I hear music. That must be. Mm. I was going crazy there for a minute. Is, is it making more sense today? And to, tonight you just practice again. Because we're going to start something new, but we're not going to finish it. But just practice that. Okay, I want you to turn back in your notes from the other day. It was page 6. And now I give you the picture and I want you to write the graph, okay? And it says write a polynomial in standard form. Okay, first off, cross the word standard. Just look at the factor. We're just doing factor. Because my college professor, when I did this, just said do factor. We're just going to write in factor form. So if you see this, you just write in factor form. Okay. Now, I'm going to put y equals. What's your zeros on this graph? The first one's at what? Negative 3. So how would I write that if I was going to get negative 3 as a 0? I'm going to put x plus 3 in parentheses. I see 0 on them. So how would I do that? Just put a what out here in front? x. And what's your other one? x minus 2, and that's your answer. I got y equals x, x plus 3, x minus 2, and that's your answer. What degree is that? 3. And shouldn't your leading coefficient be positive? So does your answer make sense? Mm-hmm. All right, let's look at 15. y equals... Um, okay, what's your first zero? Negative 1. So how would you write that? Now I got a question. Does it go through negative 1 or does it bump it? So what should you put here? 2. You say, Mr. Chesh, how would I know to put 2, 4, 6, 8 or whatever? We're just going to go with 2. The lowest one every time, okay? The lowest even multiplicity. So if you have a break, which you're not going to be able to see a break um, on these, but um, so we're just worried about the um, even. Okay, what's your other zero? X minus 3 will be your answer. Are there any questions on that? Bless you. 
All right, so tonight you're going to practice some of those, but those are pretty easy, aren't they? You good with that? Okay. All right, now, the next 15 minutes, we're going to do something your favorite. All right, but first, it says, I can graph polynomial functions. Compared to Friday, how do you feel? I need a hand signal to your chest, okay? And like I said, we're going to review that every day, quadratic, graphing polynomials. Mason, I need to see one way or the other. All right. Now, you did this last year, what we're about to do next. Turn to page 11. Some of you loved it, some of you probably didn't like it. Long division dividing polynomials. And let me say, just like you know how piecewise gets better your second year doing it, this makes more sense when you get to pre cal than it probably did in algebra 2. Because you know, you remember last year you did long division and synthetic division? Synthetic was your favorite. Your little box, boom, boom, boom. Great. I love synthetic. But sometimes you, do some, you can only do synthetic one certain time. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Today, we're just going to do three examples of long division and keep reviewing that tomorrow and do synthetic tomorrow. Okay? But you're not going to have homework on this tonight because I need it to soak in a little bit. All right. So let's look at number one. We all know how to long divide, don't we, before we even do this process. Okay. Just making sure. I, I thought it didn't pass. We didn't. All right, so I'm going to put this number in the box. Ms. Shirley, tell me whenever I'm your way. You, it does not hurt my feelings. All right, guys, the goal of long division is this. You want your first number, this first thing, to match up to the first thing over here every time. What times x will give you 6x cubed? 6x squared on it. Okay? You said, what did you just say, Mr. Hester? You want this x to become 6x cubed. Okay. So what do I have to multiply this by to get this? Well, I know I need a 6. How many x's do I have right here? One. I need two more, don't I? So you got to multiply it by x squared. So this times this will give you that. Okay. Now, you get that. You put that above the light term. Isn't there the x squared right there? So you're going to put 6x squared there. One thing you have to do, guys, is first of all, make sure every power is represented. You see how there's x cubed, x squared, x, no x? That's the form you want because if one of the powers skips, you have to go in there and put a zero. Zero x, whatever power you skip. Let's say this was missing x squared. You have to put plus zero x squared. Do you remember that? But all my powers are represented from the start to the end, okay? Now, here we go. Six times one is six. X squared times x is x cubed. Six times negative three is negative eighteen. X squared, that's going to give me that right there. And remember, just like long division, fifth and sixth grade, it's a subtraction. What does that minus do to everything? Changes the signs. You want these to always cancel out. Always cancel out. If they don't cancel out, we've got a problem. Remember, that minus goes there, changes all the signs. Now, what's negative 25 plus 18 give you? Okay, it's a minus. I put a minus there originally. What does a minus in front of everything do? You change your minus to plus and change the signs. All right, now, you say, Mr. Esther, how do you know how many things to bring down? How many things, do you remember, this is your dividend. This is your divisor. How many things are in your divisor over here? Two. You always want the same amount of number that's over here, down here, okay? So I have one thing here. I need how many more to bring down? One. That's how you know how much to bring down, okay? I have two things over here. I need two things here. You say, Mr. Chesh, what if I had three things over here? How many would I have brought? You would have brought two things down, wouldn't you? It's always the same number over here you want over here. Now, I want this x to look like this negative 7x squared. What can I multiply x by to get negative 7x squared? Uh, so I put it above the x, the light term. 
because negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. x times x is x squared. Negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21x. Put a minus. What does that minus do to everything? Those cancel out. 18 and negative 21 gives me what? Okay. I got one thing here. I got two things I need to bring. How much down? One. Okay, do you remember when you subtracted integers? Watch this, watch this. Do you remember when you first learned in seventh grade negative five minus four? And you learned that it was add the opposite? Add the opposite? That's the concept right there, buddy. That's why that minus becomes that plus and you change the signs. Does that make sense? Is that what you were about to ask? Something like that, but All right, now I want this x to look like that negative 3x. So what am I going to multiply the x by to get negative 3x? Mm-hmm. Change of signs. They both cancel out, so you have a remainder of what? So your answer is 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. Isn't that just so pretty? Does it? Yeah, I, when I was in college, and like my professor didn't tell me that I always had to have two things there, so I just come up with things to think about on that. Because they get bigger. Like down here, you're about to divide by three in a minute. Yes? So to get the terms that cancel out, you're just going to multiply the... Uh, First term by whatever makes it equal that other one. Okay. okay, let's look at number two. James, did you have a question, buddy? All right, let's look at number two. Now let's look at this first. I have 9x cubed. And then I have x to first. Is there any x squared in there? No, so I've got to put that in there, don't I? So I'm going to put 9x cubed plus 0x squared. You say, Mr. Esther, how do you know to put plus 0x squared or minus 0x squared? 0 is what? So it doesn't matter if you put plus or minus. Just make sure you got a 0x squared in there. I want 3x to look like 9x cubed. What will I multiply 3x by to look like 9x cubed? 3x. Squared. Very good. That goes above the x squared. 3x squared times 3x squared is 9x cubed. 3x squared times 2 is 6x squared. What's that minus do to everything? What now, buddy? Yep. What's that minus do to everything? Mm -hmm. The first terms cancel out. Negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6x squared. I have two terms in my divisor, so how many terms do I need down here? So I'm going to bring down how many? 1. I want 3x to look like negative 6x squared. What will I multiply 3x by to get negative 6x squared? Very good. What would that minus do to everything? Mm -hmm. So negative 1 and 4 gives me 3x. I'm going to bring that one term down. What will I multiply by 3x to get 3x? Positive 1. What's negative 3 and negative 2? Negative 5. Now I want you to look at this. This is how I know I'm done with the problem. Can I bring anything else down with that negative 5? I can't. I have to have two things. So that's my remainder. That's my remainder. Now you can say, Mr. Judge, how do you write your remainder? You write your answer. 
Okay, that's a negative 5. Do you see that? I'm going to put minus 5, and you put that over your divisor. That's how you write your remainder. You put what you get. If that had been positive 5, I would have put plus 5 there. But it's negative, so I put minus 5 over my divisor. And that is my answer. Yeah, 3x squared minus... It's on minus 5 over 3x plus 2. The divisor right here, and then it's a negative 5 remainder, so I put a minus 5 right there. No, it's whatever's your divisor. That's that 3x oh, plus oh, 2. Right, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, divisor. All right, let's look at one more, number three. Then we're going to call it a day. First of all, you check, do you have all the powers? Yes, I don't have to put... Same concept, just more terms. You want that first one to look like that. How do I get x squared to look like 2x to the fourth? I'm going to put that above the x squared term. 2x squared. I can't write today for some reason. So 2x squared times x squared would be 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative 2 would be a minus 4x cubed. 2x squared plus 7 will be a plus 14x squared. What does that minus do to everything? Changes the signs. The first two happen to cancel out. So I'm left with 13 and negative 14. That would give me a negative x squared. Okay, I have one term here, guys. How many terms do I have over here? So how many I got to bring down? I gotta bring both of them down. I want x squared to look like negative x squared, so I'm going to multiply it by what? Now my question to you is this, where would I put negative 1, above the 3x or above the minus 11? Because those are like terms, aren't they? So that's going to give me negative x squared plus 2x minus 7. I'm multiplying it. Change of signs. Okay, this is why I know I'm at my stopping point. I have how many terms here? Two. How many terms I want? Three. Do I have anything to bring down? That's your remainder. So your answer would be 2x squared minus 1 plus x minus 4 over x squared minus 2x plus 7. Now, guys, when I'm going to tell you, when you come up with a remainder like that, what I always do is just put plus automatically. Plus whatever you get over that. But when you get a single digit like this, you, that sign is determined by whether it's plus or, or minus. Does that make sense? But when you get something complicated like that, just put plus that over whatever. Because that starts getting complicated trying to do plus or minus on that, okay? You said, Mr. Tesla, what if I put plus a negative 5 here? That's for correct, okay? Is it making more sense to year two? Okay, we're going we're gonna to keep practicing this again tomorrow, but I just wanted you to get part of this. So your homework does not deal with this. It deals with what we did on Friday, okay? And then we're going to continue this tomorrow, and we're going to practice some in class. All right. You got like two or three minutes. You can do a couple graphs and then put up. Let me get organized. Everybody here, I got to post attendance. Matthew, has anybody heard from Matthew? Oh, he's in California. Thank you.
Yes, I will put your checkpoints in today. If you had to make it up.